Okay, question number four from June 2017, International A level. <clears throat> probability question. The partially completed tree diagram where P and Q are probabilities gives information about Andrew's journey to work each day. R represents the event that it's raining, therefore, R dash means it's not raining. W represents the event that Andrew walks to work. Um, B represents the event that Andrew takes the bus to work. And C represents the event that Andrew cycles to work. Okay, so there's certain things that are missing which we can fill in. Exactly. For example, this is 0 0.6. This is 0 0.6. Because I have to add up to 1. And if this is P, this must be 1 minus P. This is Q, this is 0 0.15. Well, this must be the difference between 1 and those two added together. So for now, we can say 1 minus Q plus 0 0.15 in brackets there. Okay, because they have to add up to 1. All right, now, it's given that the probability of B means the probability that he takes the bus to work is 0 0.26. Find the value of P. Now, the probability of B is a combination of these two outcomes okay which is the probability that it rains and then the probability that it takes the bus given that it rains and the probability that it doesn't rain and then the probability that it that he takes the bus given that it doesn't rain okay so these two probabilities if you combine those two together you're going to get the probability of b because those are the two probabilities which end up with you getting b as your outcome that you took the bus to work okay so this is p this is 0 0.4 so this is equal to 0 0.4 times p and this is 1 minus p and this is 0 0.15 so this is equal to um, 0 0.15 times 1 minus p Okay, those two added together will give us a probability of B, which is 0 0.26. So we can just, I've done that, shown that step there. So I can write it over here. So I know that 0 0.4 P plus 0 0.15 times 1 minus P is going to give us 0 0.26. So we can calculate now what P is using that. Okay, so can I bring that down here a bit to give me space? Yeah. Okay, now, so I have to expand that. So I have 0 0.4 P plus 0 0.15 minus 0 0.15 P equals 0 0.26. So I can combine the P's together. 0 0.4 minus 0 0.15 is 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 P equals, and I'm going to subtract 0 0.15. That's going to give me 0 0.11. 26 minus 15, yes. So P is equal to 11 over 25, basically. 0 0.11 over 0 0.25, 11 over 25, which is 0 0.44 as a decimal. So that's the value of P. So P, that wasn't very nice, was it? P equals 0 0.44. P equals, sorry about this. P equals 0 0.44. Okay, so now we found what P is. Let's just incorporate that into here so that we can make life a bit easier. So this is 0 0.44. So if that's 0 0.44, this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.44, which is 0 0.56. Okay, they add up to 1. Um, okay, that's, I guess, what we can fill in. Let's just get rid of this in case we need something else next part and then I can sort that out. okay so now it says given also that the probability that it doesn't rain given that he walks to school is 0 0.175 find the value of Q now when you got something like this conditional probability what you got to do basically is just whatever it is here and here you got to find the intersection so it's the probability that it doesn't rain intersection that he walks to school over and you always have it divided by the probability of what's after the slash probability that he walks to school so we got to find these two things so the probability that it doesn't rain given that he walks to school well that's going to be basically the probability that it doesn't rain um what was it yeah yeah the probability that it doesn't rain 
given that he walks to school. So 0 0.56 times Q. So this is 0 0.56 times Q. 0 0.56 times Q. And the probability that he walks to school is the combination of these two outcomes. This outcome and this outcome. So this is the probability that it rains and then he walks to school, which is 0 0.44 times 0 0.6. So that's going to give us 0 0.44 times 0 0.6. Okay, that gives us uh, 0 0.264. Okay, and also the probability that it doesn't rain and he walks to school, which is 0 0.56 times Q. Okay, so we got 0. Um, so this is going to be 0 0.56 Q plus 0 0.264. Let's just 0 0.264. Yes. Okay. So basically what we got to do is divide these two with each other. Okay. So we're going to have this divided by that. And we know that that's equal to 0 0.175. So we can actually set up an equation now. Okay. So we can say that 0 0.5 6 Q divided by 0 0.56 Q plus 0 0.264 is going to give us 0 0.175. So if we cross multiply here, we have 0 0.56 Q equals, so we're going to, I'm going to multiply them by this straight away um, so we can save some space. So I'm going to do 0 0.56 times 0 0.175. Yep, that gives us 49 over 500, 0 0.098Q, 0 0.098Q, um, plus, and you're going to multiply these two together, so 0 0.0, 0 0.264, multiplied by 0 0.175, yep, that gives us 0 0.4, 0 0.462. 0.0462. So if I subtract these two from each other, I'll be bringing the Q's together. So 0 0.56 minus 0 0.098 gives us 0 0.462Q. It looks like the number's working out nicely here. 0.462Q equals 0 0.0462. So it looks like Q is equal to 0 0.1. Let's just confirm that. We got 0 0.0.0462 divided by the answer, which is 0 0.462, which gives you 1 tenth, which is 0 0.1. So now we know that Q is equal to 0 0.1. Okay, so we've just answered that question. Now let's just put that value in. Q is 0 0.1. So now I can fill in the rest of this table. I know that this is 0 0.1. Okay, this is 0 0.1. And if that's 0 0.1, this is 0 0.25, so that must be 0 0.75. So what I can do now is I can take this table to the next page because I have um, to answer some questions, some more questions, and I think I'm going to have to use this. So let's just paste it here. It's a bit big. Okay, so I have all the values I need in here now. And I can then use this tree to answer the question. So find the probability that Andrew cycles to work. Okay, he cycles to work. It's only this outcome. That's the only outcome where he cycles to work. So the probability that he cycles to work is going to be 0 0.56 multiplied by 0 0.75. So we can just work that out. 0 0.56 multiplied by 0 0.75, which gives you 21 over 50, which is 0 0.42. Okay, that's pretty simple. And then part D, Okay, now for part D. Given that Andrew did not cycle to work on Friday, find the probability that it was raining on Friday. So, find the probability that it was raining on Friday, given that Andrew did not cycle to work on Friday. Okay, so that's equal to the probability that it was raining on Friday, intersection with he didn't cycle to work, over the probability that he didn't cycle to work. Okay, so from these, probability that he didn't cycle to work is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that he did cycle to work, 
which is pretty simple because we know that already is 0 0.42. So it's 1 minus 0 0.42, which is equal to 0. Point, that's 5, 8, isn't it? Okay, so that's the denominator of this. Now, what's the probability that he didn't cycle to work given that it rained on Friday? Well, the probability that he didn't cycle to work I mean, he only cycles to work when it doesn't rain. So given if it rained on Friday, he would not cycle to work. Okay, so that is a probability that he didn't cycle to work given that it rained, 0 0.44. Because there's no, yeah, he wouldn't cycle to work if it rains, okay? So, yeah, so basically this is this part of it. The probability that, oops, the probability that it rained, um, and you cycle to work. Okay, the probability that rain is cycle to work is basically going to be the same as the probability that it rain, which is going to be 0 0.44. Okay, it's only going to be if it, if it rained, he won't cycle to work, basically. So the answer to this question is going to be 0 0.44 over 0 0.58. Okay, 44 over 58. What does that give us 44, 0.44 divided by 0 0.58. That gives us 22 over 29, which is 0 0.75862, 0 0.75862, dot, 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 which we can leave it in this exact form if you want to, which is 22 over 29. Okay, so we could, we could leave it as 22 over 29 if you want, that's fine. That's like more precise or if you want to keep it in the same format where they put it in decimal form in this question then you should round it to 3SF 0.759 okay so I think both of these will be acceptable answers and there we have part D